Okay. Good evening. We are here to talk about building an academic success program for your chapter. So the things we will talk about in the course of this are um, what the structure of that can and should look like, um, accountability pieces, incentives that could be a part of that, resources that you should be thinking about and leveraging on campus, and um, some of how to individualize that for a chapter, depending on what the focus needs to be. Um, so we'll dive in and start talking about structure first. Um, and what I would say is you want to work backwards somewhat from what are, what are the goals? Um, so if it's a, we're doing okay academically, but we could be doing better, that maybe looks a little different than we're struggling academically and we need to do better or we're doing great academically, we just want to codify some of the things that we're doing. So it's really important, I would say, as a first step to have an honest conversation with yourself as the person kind of charged with this or as a group to say, what what is our goal right now with our academic program? And then think about what are the things that could get us there. Um, so some of the things that could be a part of any academic program on a chapter level, um, and some of these will be more productive than others with different sized groups. Uh, also depends a little bit on how homogeneous the group is in terms of disciplines that you're studying, some of those things. Um, but as a general rule, I would say these are probably all things that fall into kind of the best practices um, bucket of things that should be a part of a good educational support program in a chapter. Um, and I will I will bounce around a little bit here um, from what I would say are some of the easier things to the more in-depth things. Um, one of the things that I think we should just be generally encouraging every chapter member to be involved in some sort of group, honor society, something related to their major, their area of hoped for employment. Um, that creates connections with other people that are in the same discipline, taking the same courses, dealing with the same instructors, um, and that helps create a support network of people outside the chapter as well. Um, we should be, um, as a chapter, leaning on members to uh, create a homework and a test library. And that's, you know, those things are all going to change course to course, instructor to instructor within a course. Uh, but as that gets built up, that becomes extra resources for somebody who's struggling in a class, right? So, and especially those broad classes that a lot of people are gonna take in a chapter over the course of time, like introductory chemistry. You know, anybody that's in any of the STEM fields is gonna take introductory chemistry. Okay, can we build up a library of homework sets of sample tests so that somebody who's struggling in those courses can have those as extra study resources. Um, 
And again, I would put that in the sort of low entry bar. That's a, that's a homework task for members that can easily be accomplished. Um, and especially if you're going to keep it digitally, which is what I would recommend if at all possible, then it's, you know, setting up a shared space and holding people accountable to just upload the things that they have and create those resources. Um, as the person setting in the, you know, academic encouragement seat, um, I think the next thing that's easy is, um, some sort of study hours or study tables, but I would caution you that they have to be structured uh, to be effective. It, if it is just, we have a room reserved at the library as a chapter these nights or every night from this hour to this hour or whatever, that is not likely to have a huge impact. Um, what I'm talking about is something more organized. So. Um, you know, there's going to be study sessions or creating study groups around courses or people in similar disciplines, that sort of thing will be much more effective. The, you know, everybody that's in a STEM major is going to have, we're going to have STEM study hours and these upperclassmen have committed to being there and helping other folks. Um, something more structured like that is going to yield a much better result than what in my day, and I'm old, but we had study tables at the library and it was just a, we had a designated spot where we were going to be and it was expected people would sit there and be productive and do their homework and that more often led to less productive activities and being shushed by the librarians, right? So that's, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that is encouraging, productive, and more than just inhabiting the same space and theoretically working on academics. Um, another one is we're kind of getting into that medium level of commitment, um, pairing people, uh, upperclassmen and new members as they come in that are in the same majors or similar majors. Um, for academic purposes, uh, you know, sort of beyond any kind of like big brother type thing, just a, this is a person who you could reasonably go to uh, within the chapter for help academically. Um, again, fairly low entry, um, but if you're going to institute that, I would also institute some check-in accountability in terms of have you met with your academic buddy in the last two weeks or three weeks and talked about how things are going something like that um, course check-ins uh, I've seen a number of chapters do this successfully um, whether that's you know most institutions now have some sort of online viewable what are people getting in their classes grades entered as they go for a lot of classes um, creating a check-in system related to that uh, within the chapter on like three week five week cadences so that we can start to see is somebody struggling in a course early um, and push them to get help um, and then in the things that are a little more in-depth um, if you have people that are in the same age group or the same advancement level doing coordinated course scheduling 
So if there are, you know, five people in the chapter that need to take organic chemistry next semester, like, try to coordinate and get them all in the same section so that they are able to work together then outside of class and support each other. Um, and other things like that. Like, let's get a running list of who's interested in or looking at taking what courses this semester or next semester and how can we help m match people up and get into the same sections if at all possible and create some of those more organic support systems. Um, and then the last thing, and this is a little more workload, but we should absolutely be having some ongoing educational education support type things happening at chapter meetings. Having people from university resources or tutoring service or the library come in and talk about what is available as academic supports. Having faculty members come in and talk about, you know, tips and tricks to course scheduling or tips and tricks for, you know, everybody that's in computer science should know these five things about how the de department operates. Something those types of things that can build knowledge and awareness of how to navigate the system and get help um, and bringing people into a chapter meeting to have those conversations where it's easier and safer and perhaps less intimidating to ask questions of somebody like that um, are all all of these things should be pieces of a, a robust educational program on the chapter side. Um, and then we want to talk about accountability because this is a big part of building to success. We want to identify people that are struggling as early as possible. Um, and sometimes that can be done with mid-semester check-ins, that sort of things. Um, sometimes that's going to be when we get grade reports at the end of a semester and somebody does poorly. And that's institution to institution. It's course to course sometimes, depending on how the grading for courses is done. There may not be a good way to know if somebody's not going to do well in a course until close to the end, um, but intervening as early as possible when we find out that somebody is struggling is really important, um, and it has to come from a place of care, right? We're not trying to get down on our brothers because they're not doing well academically. It's talk to me about why you're struggling. Is it the course? Is it something completely not school related? Um, finding out what those causes are and helping them to address those problems. You know, is it somebody performing poorly academically may not be well suited for the discipline, may not be investing the time to do well, may have personal things going on that are taking their attention away from school, um, may have, you know, something not great going on that they need help with. Maybe there's a substance abuse problem or something, right? Like, we don't know. Um, but the entire purpose of our being at an institution is to get the education and get on down the road with our lives and be successful. So we want to support our brothers in doing that. So it's having those private conversations to figure out what, what the root cause is. Um, there does need to be some, usually some public accountability for people underperforming, uh, but we want to be 
careful with how we do that. Again, we don't want to necessarily shame people. We want to hold them accountable. Um, so we want to have a good balance there um, in terms of having the conversation, figuring out what the root cause is, um, and then being able to address it and support that brother appropriately. And so maybe maybe the supports for a brother involve consequences, like not coming to social events or not being allowed to participate in X, Y, or Z. Maybe that is the thing that is going to motivate them. Maybe that is directly co correlated to what their challenge is. Maybe their challenge is not something that negative consequences are going to help with. Maybe the compliance portion is, you know, we need to see that you're meeting with somebody from the academic support center every week. Or uh, maybe we need to see that you're meeting with a counselor every week, depending on, you know, it's about holding those brothers accountable to get the help they need to be successful academically, whatever that help looks like. Um, and we want to be checking in at regular intervals. Um, so if somebody has been identified as underperforming, um, then we need to have a set schedule weekly, every other week. A, a legitimate check-in that is more than how's it going like let's get granular and have tough conversations about okay did we these are the courses you're in did we get all the homework done in the last week where do we have tests or exams coming up where do we have projects coming up how are we preparing for those those types of things are what i'm talking about when I'm, talking about accountability at regular interval, intervals. Um, we need to be serious about supporting people if we've identified that we're going to support them. Another important part about of this, uh, especially when we're talking about raising success, is incentives. Incentives work great for a lot of people. Um, so your chapter may already have incentives around um, you know, rewards for the people that are doing the most service or the most philanthropy work or something like that. You can build on an existing incentive structure like that if that's working. Or you can create one and that can be, you know, monetary incentives like scholarships or dues remission those types of things and some of that can be done by the chapter itself some of it can be done you know in concert with local alumni um, the sky is really the limit there it's uh, I think a discussion amongst chapter members about you know we would like to create an incentive structure to encourage people to do well academically what would be motivating for people um, sometimes recognition is good enough too um, i've seen everything from you know like a if you get an a on the test you get to put it up on the refrigerator in the chapter house um like you would at home as a little kid and that gets people excited um it can be things as simple as that all the way up to you know some sort of formal recognition a plaque uh, you know an award that sort of thing there are all kinds of gradients there. It's what's going to get people excited. Um, and in terms of like more monetary things, uh, you know, there are alumni are always, I'm reasonably always willing to 
support people that are doing well academically. Um, so there's always always the ability to talk to your local ones about some sort of scholarship for the person with the highest GPA in a semester or something along those lines. Um, we've also seen chapters where um, you know the person with the highest GPA in the house doesn't have to pay dues the following semester. Um, so there are, again, all kinds of things that can be done, uh, you know. And again, down to the small things. Ace attests, you get a, you know, coupon for a free pizza from the local pizza joint. Like it's, um, there are all kinds of levels of incentives and recognition that can go a long way with people. It's about having a conversation about how uh, people in your chapter would like to be recognized, how they would like to be incentivized if you're going to go down that road. Um, but creating recognition for positive outcomes is an important part of this. We want to identify and support the people that are struggling. We also want there to be you know, hope on the other side in terms of positively recognizing those who are successful because that will motivate people too. Now, let's talk about resources and people that can help you in your job on your campus. Um, most campuses will have some or all of these things. Um, some sort of academic support or success center. Um, and those people are usually over the moon about coming to chapter meetings and talking about what they do and what they can do. Um, and so identifying those, sharing that information with everybody in the chapter so they know where it is, encouraging people to make use of it, all good things. Um, some places will have as a part of that or separate from that uh, a writing center usually as part of the library staff um, again that's usually a great resource um, I've seen a lot of places where like you can email them something that you're working on and they will spend a certain amount of time looking at it and giving corrections and those sort of things um, especially for people that are just getting into writing longer academic works that is that can be a good resource um, identifying like existing study groups um, some places again for those common core classes there will be supported study groups um, that are organized every semester and you know the intro chemistry study group meets Mondays and Wednesdays and this is where and when and those things um, so identifying those sharing that information making sure people have it are there tutoring services available on campus um, what are those how do people sign up for them um, this is one of the big things that you as the academic person for the chapter can do uh, that can really be an asset to people um, because there are those out there that will struggle along and not realize that these things can be had. Um, the other thing in the resource column here is uh, having a faculty member as an advisor. Um, and I'm not talking about like as a like advising the organization as a whole. I'm talking about finding somebody who's willing to invest in the academic success of the members. Um, so whether that's you know making themselves available for advising appointments around like scheduling or things like that or somebody else that a member can go to to talk about I'm struggling in this class and I don't know how to do better um, 
it's all that also is somebody who has spent years and years and years of their life navigating higher education and can most likely come in and talk about where to access a number of these other resources um, but also tips tricks strategies for navigating your higher education in general um, and that can be invaluable so something to think about there um, and I've alluded to this a couple of times but I really can't over stress um, and this is one of the things I talk about regularly with people um, if all you're doing at chapter meetings is uh, officer reports and what's happening in the next week um, you're wasting an opportunity having educational programming at chapter meetings is a great way to bring those resources in share them with everybody um, and I advocate for that for a number of things but especially for academic success this is a great use of 20 minutes half an hour of one of your chapter meetings um, and should be something that we are doing on a regular cadence you know if if you're not devoting two or three of your chapter meetings a semester to something related to academic improvement for the members you're probably missing a big opportunity so bringing in those service offices bringing in faculty members um, especially if you know a large portion of the house is in a discipline let's try to bring in faculty members from that discipline to a chapter meeting one that helps them have a better impression of the organization hopefully um, but then they're gonna see a bunch of the people that they have in courses on a regular basis um, and better be able to identify your members better and hopefully respond better to inquiries from people in the future for help um, but those people can come in and talk about oh I teach the intro series but I also teach this this and this uh, as upper upper level classes uh, which can be a great way for people to start to chart out what they want to take with whom or some of those things um, and also doing things in chapter that can be skills or resources focused right like uh, and there are things we can do to help one another so and as an intellectual pursuit I, you know sort of honoring honoring that literary society background of Psy Upsilon maybe as an academic exercise everybody has to come to chapter with a poem they wrote or something just think about how we uh, expand and focus on the academic pursuit itself um, can be a great chapter program okay. so that is the end of my talk and I'm going to stop the recording here but we'll happily field questions.